This is a big first step in speeding up the movement of materials and goods through our supply chain. President Joe Biden said on Wednesday that new commitments from clogged ports on the West Coast, as well as retailers and delivery companies to keep their operations going 24-7, will help ease major shipping bottlenecks that have been weighing on the U.S. economy and threatening to disrupt the holiday season. Today, Walmart, our nation's largest retailer, is committing to go all in on moving this pro its products 24-7 from the ports to their stores nationwide. Additionally, FedEx and UPS, two of our nation's biggest freight movers, are committing today to significantly increase the amount of goods they're moving at night. So by increasing the number of late night hours of operation and opening up for less crowded hours when the goods can move faster, today's announcement has the potential to be a game changer. The stop and start nature of an ongoing health crisis has snarled global supply chains, resulting in a backlog of products that includes half a million containers on cargo ships waiting to be offloaded at the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. White House officials have been warning that Americans may face higher prices and some empty shelves over the holiday season. Earlier on Wednesday, White House spokeswoman Jen Psaki said she couldn't promise that even with the extended hours of operations, there would be no holiday shopping disruptions. We cannot guarantee. What we can do is use every lever at the federal government disposal to reduce uh, delays. Mizuho Securities U.S. Chief Economist Stephen Rusciuto says there is only so much the White House can do. Well, first of all, FedEx isn't really the problem. Walmart isn't really the problem. The problem is at the ports. The problem is overseas where the goods are being bottlenecked. It's a huge logistic nightmare, and a lot of it is overseas. And therefore, you know, what the president's doing you know, isn't going to really hurt. Uh, but at the end of the day, it doesn't solve the problem. Biden said Wednesday's moves were only a first step and promoted his ambitious infrastructure plan, which he said would invest heavily in the country's ports and in making more products at home. We need to think big and bold. Amazon.com has repeatedly been accused of knocking off the products of sellers in its marketplace and rigging search results and exploitation of its vast trove of data to promote its own merchandise at the expense of other sellers. The company has denied the accusations, but thousands of internal Amazon documents examined by Reuters, including emails, strategy papers, and business plans, show the company ran a systematic campaign of creating knockoffs and manipulating search results to boost its own line of products in India, one of the company's largest growth markets. The documents reveal how Amazon's private brands team in India secretly exploited internal data to copy products sold by other companies, then offered them on its platform. The employees also stoked sales of Amazon private brand products by rigging Amazon's search results so that the company's products would appear ahead of others. The global retail giant responded to the accusations, stating, We believe these claims are factually incorrect and unsubstantiated. The findings in the documents could intensify the legal and regulatory pressure the company is facing in many countries. Amazon is under investigation in the United States, Europe and India for alleged anti-competitive practices that hurt other businesses. Public figures will now get more protection from Facebook on its platforms. In an update to its bullying and harassment policies, the social media giant announced Wednesday it will now remove severe sexualizing content targeting public figures on Facebook and Instagram. Politicians, celebrities, and now those who, quote, have become famous involuntarily or because of their work, such as activists and journalists, will be among those protected. The content listed by the company includes profiles, pages, groups, or events dedicated to sexualizing the public figure, as well as derogatory, sexualized photoshopped images, drawings, and more. Facebook's global head of safety, Antigone Davis, said it was part of an effort to reduce attacks disproportionately faced by women, people of color, and the LGBTQ community. Additionally, as part of the anti-harassment policy update, Facebook will now also remove coordinated efforts of mass harassment that target individuals at heightened risk of offline harm, like victims of violent tragedies or government dissidents. This news comes as the social media giant faces wide-ranging scrutiny from global lawmakers and regulators over its content moderation practices and harms linked to its platforms, with internal documents leaked by a whistleblower forming the basis of a U.S. Senate hearing last week. 
A rally by the tech titans drove the S&P 500 and NASDAQ higher Wednesday, but weakness in financial stocks put a damper on the Dow. On Wall Street, the Dow closed flat. The S&P 500 added nearly a third of a percent. The NASDAQ rose almost three quarters percent. Gerber Kawasaki CEO Ross Gerber said investors snapped up big cap tech stocks in anticipation of strong profit growth. We have earnings coming into play, and clearly technology is going to have blowout numbers, and they're not affected by supply chain shortages and inflation like traditional businesses. And there were more signs of inflation Wednesday. A Labor Department report showed consumer prices rose solidly in September, and investors are anticipating that inflation is poised to rise further. Shares of J.P. Morgan Chase declined, even though the big U.S. bank reported a 24 percent jump in quarterly profit. A surge in deal-making activity and the release of additional reserves set aside for bad loans pumped up the bottom line. Apple shares fell. A media report said the iPhone maker plans to cut production of its iPhone 13. And shares of Delta Airlines flew south. The carrier warned that the sharp spike in fuel prices could result in a quarterly pre-tax loss. Strong results from J.P. Morgan Chase kicked off the third quarter reporting season. America's leading bank announced profits and revenues that topped forecasts on Wednesday. Record revenues from some of its investment bank operations and a jump in consumer lending activity fueled results. Average loans and deposits rose, and so did credit card spending, suggesting consumers are becoming more active. And if they are, that bodes well for the overall economy, since consumer spending is responsible for roughly two-thirds of all U.S. economic activity. The strength of the consumer prompted the bank to release more than $2 billion from the credit reserves it set aside to cover bad loans during the health crisis. Profits saw a 24 percent jump compared to a year ago, but it wasn't all tied to the consumer. The Wall Street Bank also profited nicely from advisory fees tied to corporate deal-making and stock market debuts. J.P. Morgan Chase is largely seen as a global economic bellwether given its size and exposure to vast sections of the economy. CEO Jamie Dimon was upbeat about the economic outlook and said with the health crisis starting to ease, we should, quote, all be thanking our lucky stars. Thank <laughs> you.